If you're in the Atlanta area and you are trying to get cash flow, you're in the right spot. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV, and I help investors like you start, build, and grow your real estate portfolios. Now, Today I'm talking to folks from the Atlanta area because that's where my my client Carlo is from. Now, Carlo's running into an issue. His budget's a little light uh, for the Atlanta market. Perhaps everyone else who's watching this show is in the same situation because the Atlanta market right now, the cash flow, it's tight. It's very, very difficult to hit the types of numbers we've been able to achieve in the past in that market. So what Carlo did, and perhaps what a lot of you are going to want to do after watching this whole video, is he decided to move his money to the Cleveland market. Now, I know you're thinking, like, dude, Cleveland, what the hell's up in Cleveland, bro? I'll tell you what's up in Cleveland, man. Freaking cheap-ass real estate, okay? Cheap real estate that we could put Section 8 tenants into, and we could get the cash flow numbers that we want to achieve. Now, my team headquartered there so we have all the boots on the ground infrastructure that you guys are going to need right property management maintenance construction we handle the whole thing from top to bottom for you right so you get the benefit of this market without having to to move or hop on a plane anything of that nature and it's for you specifically carlo we've been looking at some single family homes and I know you're working on your pre-approval letter, but I wanted to shoot this video off to you because I think this is a ridiculous opportunity. The numbers on this property are insane. Now, it is a little higher than the, the budget you and I have been working with. So I figured why you're talking to these lenders, why you're trying to work things out, why you're trying to square away your financing, now might be a good time to have the conversation with your lenders to see if we could stretch that budget a little bit higher than originally anticipated and take down this multifamily. Because, dude, the numbers speak for themselves. So let's jump into those right after this commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's take a look at the numbers, okay? This property, 4010 Bush, Cleveland, 4 for 109. Just hit the market today. We're probably going to be in a bidding war. We're probably going to need to move quick, right? There is going to be a lot of people looking to take this sucker down. List price, $114,000. $900. I want you to pay that. As a matter of fact, I want you to go $100 over, right? Let's just shoot them an offer of $115K. It's like 99 cents versus a dollar, right? Something's a dollar ninety-nine. It feels a lot cheaper than if you're asked to pay $2 for it. So when we present our offer to the seller, right? $115. They're like, whoa, we're only asking $114, right? Makes them feel good. Gives us a better shot at taking it down because this... <laughs> Woo! This is a freaking earner, dude. You got to do what you got to do to take this one down. You might even want to go above that price, maybe as high as 120, but I think 115 should take it down, okay? Now, uh, it's very nice property, and it's been renovated recently, right? It's got the exact type of um, like look I would want it to have, right? You got the agreeable gray walls. You got the white trim, right? You got the neutral... Uh, the neutral vinyl allure type flooring in the kitchen, right? That's great. Nothing super fancy, but this is what we want for these type of rentals, man. The hardwoods throughout, dude. This is this is looking good, right? So at your next turnover, it's not like you have to completely overhaul it, right? We got new updated fixtures right here in that uh, <clears throat> bathroom, right? Uh, I don't really like seeing carpet in the bedroom, but hey, it's already there. It's not the end of the world. Oh, plus two. It comes with, like, a gigantic-ass bong, right? I'm pretty sure that's a huge bong. Or or it could either be a bong or it could be something that you put quarters in. Hard to tell from this photo. Either way, the sucker still makes money, right? So let's keep it moving, people. Oh, wait. Well, check that out, dude. Look at that. That's a purple fan. That's actually kind of cool. I've never seen that before. I like that. My daughter would dig that. Anyway. Uh, the rest uh, of the property, right? It's looking fresh. Uh, this is uh, photographs of the other unit prior to them placing a tenant, okay? 
It's, this is just what you want, right? Nothing fancy, nothing knocking your friggin' socks off, but this is exactly what you want, dude. Updated electrical, like, it's already vinyl-sided. That's really good. You don't have to worry about lead-based paint issues on the outside of your property, right? And the best part about this, okay, the units. They're three-bed, one-bath, okay? Both tenants are paying six hundo, right? Six hundo is under market rent for a two one. Normally on two ones, we are getting seven fifty. But these are three ones, and the units look very nice. So it's not like uh, you need to do an insane overhaul to get market rent. Market rent, like a market rent on this sucker, huge, huge. Seventeen hundred a month. That's twenty thousand four hundred a year, right? Of that 20400 a year, I believe your NOI should be a little bit over 10, 10437 If we get it at the 115 that I talked about, right? You put down less than 30 Gs, okay? 28750 bank kicks in 86.2 and a quarter. That would be a 21% cash on cash return or a 9.1 cap, right? And that also includes additional money you're getting now, right? While your tenants are in there, you're not spending money on vacancy, but I'm having you not count. A certain amount of money. I'm having you not count over a thousand dollars a year of money that comes in now towards your vacancy, because eventually you'll have a vacancy. I'm having you not count over a thousand dollars a year towards your capital expenditures, right? Those electric panels, they look brand new, okay? But don't forget, right? We got a 30 year roof on these properties, right? Every 30 years, you're dropping seven G's. I don't believe we have a brand new roof on the sucker, so I'm sure in the next decade, you're dropping that money. Your furnaces, they last 30 years. They cost about three grand, right? So you got to save money towards that stuff. Hot water tanks, there's two of them in a duplex, folks. That's $1,000 every 15 years, right? So you're probably getting more money over the first few years of owning this property than I'm even calculating on your return because I know those big charges are coming. That's just part of the game when you own properties, right? But this thing... That's why there's going to be a friggin' bidding war. This thing is nice. It's got the three beds. You can max the rent out at eight fifty a unit. That's friggin' amazing. Now, does it make sense to immediately jack your tenants' rents from six to eight fifty? No, that would be crazy, right? Even though the units are in good shape, you don't want to like force a turnover, especially when you're still bringing in twelve hundred in rent, right? What I'd probably recommend you do: sign them up to a one-year lease once you take it over, keep the rent where it is. Then after that, start going up fifty, seventy-five, even a hundred bucks. Uh, a month, right? They know they can't get no three-bedroom units in these neighborhoods anywhere else. So I don't think they're going to want to leave, but you don't want to shock them immediately with a huge $250 increase. Last but not least, before I get out of here, uh, I want to show you something as far as the neighborhood goes. This, I really like this particular neighborhood. Now, it's not a high-end neighborhood by any means, right? We talk about the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, Okay. Google that if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's probably also in the show notes below, and I know it's on the tools and resource section of HoltonWeiss.com, right? I grade all the neighborhoods in the Cleveland area, A to F scale. A is the least risky. F is the most risky. A, neighborhoods, you're not going to find rentals, right? I know you guys come to the Cleveland market because stuff is cheap, right? There ain't no cheap properties in A-grade neighborhoods, folks. Like, you guys might find this shocking but we also have rich people in the Cleveland area too, right? So there's half a million, $750,000, million dollar houses, right? So that don't make no sense for you guys to even think about, okay? When you're in the rental game though, right? I would consider this to be about a D neighborhood, but it's my favorite D neighborhood, right? D neighborhoods, I think it's very important to put Section 8 tenants in there when you can because it eliminates your risk because uh, the biggest risk of a D neighborhood is people not paying rent, right? Section 8 eliminates that risk. And if you're going to invest in a D neighborhood, I love the Clark Fulton neighborhood because this is the house. This right here. I'm sorry, right here. I went too far. This is the house. This right here. This is Metro Health. Big old hospital, big old campus that's getting a billion dollars of investment going towards their campus in the surrounding area of building low-income housing, right? On top of that, if you zoom the map out a little bit, right above here, you got Tremont, Ohio City, Detroit Shoreway, Edgewater, Lake Erie, downtown. Those are all the areas in the Cleveland market where people talk about the resurgence of Cleveland. So you're directly south of all the hot spots that have already gentrified, and you're getting a billion dollars of investment into your low-income neighborhood. So if you're going to make a bet 
on a low-income neighborhood to get some cash flow, but also some appreciation in the future. Have your cake and eat it too. Cannot guarantee it, but if I'm going to speculate, I'm going to speculate on the one neighborhood in Cleveland that's bordering a lot of gentrification and is getting a billion dollars of investment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.